So I have this saw here. They started off as a spear point, became a knife slash saw, and um, then I snapped the tip off and turned it into like a burn slash gouge for carving grooves. Today it's going to become a drill bit. So uh, if you stick with me, this is going to be my drill bit. Helps not to stick your feet in the fire. I just burnt my foot. When you're making a stone drill bit like this, this is pretty delicate. This is going to be going into something pretty hard. So when you make these, you kind of want to make sure your edge is pretty controlled. In other words, kind of cut down on the real aggressive serrations. Get a pretty refined edge. What well, typically tends to happen, if you're drilling too fast or drilling on something really hard, those serrations can really grab and break off the tip of your little needle tip here. This is a very delicate little flint drill. You have to take your time with these, especially when you're going in the... I'm going to be going in the antler with this. You could soak the antler and get it really waterlogged. You know, soften it up. Um, but usually I'm pretty unprepared for these videos, so I'll be drilling in the hard antler. Slow and steady wins this race. You can't push it. And take your time.
That's probably one of my favorite points to make are these bone broadheads, bone points. Super cool resource. You can get this stuff super sharp. You get a sharp needle tip on it. Um, and it's pretty much everywhere you can find it. So you can come across bone and make yourself a nice um, arrow point. And uh, I really enjoy making this stuff. You can get it very thin in the haft, which is convenient and nice when you go to haft it. You can get it whatever thickness you need. If you use a leg bone, it's naturally fluted on one side. And uh, like I said, I really, I really like making these. A lot of fun. By far, my favorite uh, bone to use comes from the shin bone of a deer, specifically the rear leg. This is an awesome bone to to use. I use it a lot, probably because it's already set up for working with stone tools. It has has grooves on either side of it, guide grooves, so you can run your flint. Split this bone literally right in half and get two halves out of it, two blanks. Grind that flat. You have a nice preform for a long knife blade or a spear point. And what I like to use is right here, it flares out and gets nice and flat. Um, so you can get a nice couple broad heads out of this piece of bone right here. And then you have parts left over for shards for smaller game points and stuff. But this is a, just a fantastic bone. I like using this bone. If I have it, I use this. And uh, you can make some really cool points out of it. Okay, so you can see we got a nice long flat section of bone stock here. This can be ground flat and shaped and profiled into a nice uh, knife blade, spear point, several arrow points for that matter. Um, I like to cut off this bottom wider section right here and inside of that I can grind and shape and get a nice, uh, nice arrow point out of that. You can also get some smaller ones out of this, but this is the widest section if you're trying to be uh, meet any type of legal requirements or anything. Um, one other thing I like to do is um, I like to scrape out some of this residual powdery waxy marrow that's inside a bone. And I'll sometimes rub it right into the finished point, kind of treat and condition the bone, give it a little protection, buff it in there, kind of seals the bone. It's good for it. You get a nice sharp needle tip on these things. They're really good for penetration, for stabbing. And uh, I have a whole nother half of this, so. It's a really good bone to uh, know and use, that uh, rear shin bone. It's, uh, you, you can do a lot with it.
this is my most common arrow setup. Blunt tip. Basically have a wad of uh, backstrap sinew and hide glue. I layer that backstrap hide glue and it forms a big wad of uh, sinew on the end of these. Gives the arrow a little bit of weight, helps them fly a little bit better, but really it protects the end of my arrow. This is how I learned to shoot. This is what I shoot primarily in the yard, around in the woods. I don't have to worry about breaking tips or damaging the arrow. This is reinforced, strong, and very effective on real small game. So what I like about these blunts is um, I can really get a feel for how the arrow's flying, practiced up with the arrow, shooting it over and over and over again, and I don't have to worry about damaging anything. I get an idea for how the arrow's flying, so I have that muscle memory connection there with this arrow. And when it comes time to actually think about going out in the woods and maybe hunting with it, I like to go one step further. All I have to do at this point is I know how the arrow's flying. I take a really lightweight piece of bone here. It's a bone shard whittled down to a really sharp point. This is really hard, really sharp. I got about a three inches of bone protruding out the end of this basically, you know, reinforced arrow. And um, I could take this in the woods now and hunt, and that is wicked sharp. I would not want to get hit by that. Really effective. I think it will stab through anything. And I know how the arrow is performing. I could easily take this out and shoot this again, practice with it. When it comes time to uh, take it in the woods, all I have to do is align this tip. Get it so it's not wobbling at all. Get it. Just turn it. So I get it lined up just right, and you can take this and shoot this at small games, and this works awesome. Usually you can just take the end of the bone here and drill it right into the, the shaft, use it as a drill bit. If you shoot any type of natural shaft, shaft that has any type of little pith in it, this usually goes pretty quick, it's not hard. Just get yourself a bone sliver, whittle it down to a nice point, and this thing is super deadly on the right size game. So there's just some back straps in you that I'm stripping down here. It's been soaking for several hours. Get it down into nice clean strands. I like to strip a bunch of these ahead of time. Just like that. This one I'm going to use to wrap the end of that arrow. And I have a uh, I have like a little clay bowl here with the high glue. It'll just be layered, layers of uh, sinew and hide glue. It forms a really hard, really hard wad on the end of these things. It gives them a little weight and um, really protects my arrow really well. You could shoot these and shoot these and shoot these. Hundreds and hundreds of shots hitting dirt and sticks. and That's why I like it because it's very practical. You don't have to maintain them. It basically it's protected. Okay, so first thing I like to do here is this end. I like to give the sinew and glue a little tooth to bite onto so I like to gnash up this first inch and a half or so of the end of this arrow. This gives the glue a good bite and the sinew something to really grab onto. Helps it hold up a little bit better. Spread some glue on there, just like that. Now I have all this sinew here that I stripped out ahead of time. I'm just rubbing a little bit of that glue on it. I like to reinforce this end really well because that's going to 
It's going to take all the beating when I'm missing everything. <laughs> This is how I learned to shoot, I just shoot in blunts. You don't have to really worry about breaking tips or anything. You get a feel for how your arrows are flying. There's our arrow all wrapped up. I just keep adding layers of sinew and glue until you know, the arrow f is at a balance point that I like. I, ha just, it's, I just do it by feel. And it's funny, when I take a whole group of arrows and compare them, they all seem to balance out at the same point, and that's just done by feel. So I just keep adding layers of weight here at the front end, reinforce this. And uh, when this dries, it'll uh, it'll shrink up, look a little bit nicer. But here's the idea: just a mass of sinew and glue forms like a really hard wad there in the end. So I'll set this aside for several days, let it dry really good, let it cure up. And uh, what you end up with is something like this. This is all dry. This one is. And I like to I like to just coat and protect these bindings a little bit because these are gonna get constantly shot in the dirt, be it exposed to moisture, which will kind of soften the glue and the sinew. So what I do is I just take <laughs> I have a whole bunch of sap here I've been collecting for uh, making glue. I just take the pure sap, pure pitch. And I just coat the bindings. I just, I just give it a nice layer of sap. Kind of protects all this. And uh, this will get dirty and everything. And, but this will kind of keep those fibers from fraying and unraveling. I just coat it all with some sap. Helps protect my binding. Gets your fingers all messy. <laughs> and I'm good to go. All I have to do is take a bone sliver. And I could stick that right in the end and it's a really awesome combination.
I'd like to uh, dedicate this video to all the historic hunters of old and new. Uh, I'm really thankful to be able to come out here in the woods and gather all natural materials and build my own hunting equipment. I feel like it really connects me with the past and something really old and it's a, just a lot of fun to be able to do this. So I want to encourage anyone that uh, maybe has an interest in this who uh, maybe thought about coming out here and trying this themselves, go ahead and do it and uh, have fun with it. I also want to say uh, a special thanks to uh, Thad Beckham. Uh, Thad, I've really uh, enjoyed all your instructions throughout the years uh, and uh, your willingness to show uh, these earth tools in use and uh, demonstrate that. I've pulled a lot from your work and uh, I really appreciate all you're doing and uh, hope to see you out there doing your thing some more. And um, I just want to thank everyone for watching. Take care.